Greetings to those who watch below. For today's video, we're going to be looking into some stories about pale white humanoid entities. These unknown cryptids are often associated with the story of the rake. But before we get into them, I'd like to say thank you to those who dwell below. An exclusive channel membership you can check out using the link in the description box. So thank you to Steffi Ray, Wicked Witch, Lisa Watts, Lefty Kim, Irish Creepypasta Guy, Christina Groves, and Julie B. Also, if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel, hitting that notification bell so you don't miss any videos. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy. I Don't Really Know What I Encountered in Colorado by Silence is Lloyd. My wife and I decided to make a drive to Colorado Springs on the recommendation of a friend of mine. She'd never seen mountains before, so I figured the Rockies would be perfect. We stayed in a Holiday Inn that was right at the base of the mountain and had a great view of Pikes Peak as soon as we looked out the window. She was thrilled. She had never seen anything like it before and she's a sucker for a gift shop, so this place was great. We had a great time. Our second day there, we decided to drive up to Pikes Peak, but we were told at the gate we could go up most of the way, but the very summit was closed off because there was too much snow. We could still get really far up though. I think Pikes Peak is around 14,000 feet, and we got to like 11,000 feet before it was closed off. So we were there up above the clouds, which were awesome, because it was just like looking out over the ocean. We stopped at the little rest centre on the way up to get a hot chocolate for the drive, and a magnet for Colorado, since we collect magnets for every state we go to. It was pretty cool, because we had Bigfoot crossing signs along the way up, which were really fun to take a picture in front of. Anyway, once we got to the closed off part of Pikes Peak, we parked our car and got out, and just kind of took in the view. I don't think anybody else was up there with us, except the guy sitting a little way up in his truck, making sure people didn't go up any higher than they were supposed to. Even if we couldn't go to the summit, it was still gorgeous. We took some pictures, all of which were really terrible, and it was really cold. But I'd insisted we buy 5'11 jackets, pants and boots for the track, and my wife didn't understand why I demanded that brand. But if you're a dude, you know. So we were pretty toasty. I wandered off and started looking around the rocks, and what few trees were up at that elevation. I just like to explore stuff off the beaten path. I heard some snow crunching nearby and assumed it was another sightseer, so I moved toward the sound of the crunching snow but didn't see anybody. There's a few trees here and there but not hard to see really. It was snowing a bit however and the wind was blowing the snow sideways. I'd gone pretty far from my wife at this point and didn't want to stray too much farther but I was honestly hoping to see a wolf or something. I found tracks in the snow and they were pretty small, so I was really hoping to see a wolf. I did not see a wolf. At first I didn't see anything. I followed the tracks around a tree and kind of carefully peeked around it, but I didn't see anything. The tracks stopped there though. I didn't get right up on the tree, because if it was a wolf, I mean, I didn't want to get face to face with it. What I did see, eventually, was a pure white thing scurry away from the exact location I was looking. It was pure white. I'm not sure if it was invisible or just blended in perfectly with the snow. It moved on all fours, had a huge bulbous head, kind of like the way you think the typical version of an alien would look, and it had a spindly body. Its arms and legs were super skinny and its body wasn't a whole lot bigger. Its arms and legs themselves were really long. I'd say it was probably between four and five feet tall if it was standing upright. It was a bit hard to tell with it on all fours and in the snow. It turned around and took a look at me and had these really small black eyes and no defining features. Its eyes were really far apart and almost on the side of its head. Its fingers and hands were buried but when it went to move I saw what its hand looked like. It had fingers that were way too long, like not ET long but wiry spindly fingers. It looked to me for just a second and then leaped forward away from me and as soon as it landed in the snow it was invisible again or I just couldn't see it. Then it hopped again and it jumped a good six feet or so from a dead stop and took off running. It ran away from me and scaled some rocks in the distance 
like it was nothing, and crawled along the cliffside. Whenever it was in the snow, it looked invisible though. I'm not sure if that's because it was all white, or because it was like, actually turning invisible. Anyway, in a few seconds, it was gone. When I got back to my wife, she was waiting in the car, and didn't believe a word of it, and thought I was just trying to scare her. To this day, she still doesn't believe me. The Thing in the Woods by Johnny Ringo 12 About six years ago, over the summer of my junior year, going into my senior year of high school, I experienced something that I can't quite shake off to this day. My friend's parents were going out of town for the weekend, so myself and three others planned a sleepover so we could all hang out and be as loud as we want. We slept over at my friend Matt's house. His house was located on the east side of town, where a small wooded area was located. That night, we all mentioned how we should sleep on his trampoline, since it was warm that night and none of us had done it before. Matt was a little concerned with the idea, because he had mentioned that homeless people, and sometimes deer, wander in and out of the little forest next to his house. There was no fencing separating us from the woods, so anything could go in and out of the yard, into the forest, and vice versa. I told him we were going to be fine, and that there was nothing to worry about. Boy, did I wish I could take that statement back. We started setting up our spots on the tramp, getting cosy and just hanging out looking at our phones. After an hour into this, I started to hear twigs snapping and leaves crunching. Matt was the only one who wasn't on the tramp, but sitting on a small river donut on the deck next to the tramp. I was looking at Matt while all this was happening, and he was looking into the woods. He didn't say anything other than a quiet, I told you this was a bad idea. I kept listening for a few minutes, and then it stopped. My friends were all listening too, but they didn't seem concerned. It was really quiet after it stopped. None of us said a thing. We all looked back on our phones, and that's when I saw it. The second my eyes met my phone, I saw from my peripheral vision this seven to eight foot tall thing run out of the woods into the backyard, and it darted to the side of the house. All we saw was the silhouette of whatever it was. It was almost as if it was ghostly. It was extremely slim and bipedal. Here's the kicker though. We saw it run, but we didn't hear it run. It made zero sound when it was moving, but it made the motion of someone running. When we saw this, we all did the exact same thing. Screamed and ran off the tramp. Matt was the first one inside, and I was surprised he was even able to walk, let alone run, because of a prior injury he had. We left some blankets and pillows outside, because we were in such a hurry. We shut and locked the sliding door, all the windows and doors we could find. We kept looking out some of the windows to see if we could see anything, but there was nothing. Because we were so startled, we stood up and waited until sunrise to finally go to sleep. I think about what happened almost on a daily basis. Everyone I have told has a theory that it escaped from the mountains next to the forest. For a little backstory, I live in Magna, Utah. The mountains on the east side that separate us from Thule are said to house some sort of military secret base where experimentation and other things are done on who knows who or what. My Bridge Encounter with the Rake by Bite Sized Official I was in Croydon, Indiana and in the summer of 2017. My wife at the time and I had heard stories of the legend of Lickford Bridge, and decided to check it out for ourselves. The story goes that back in the day the man who used to own the land would take his workers to the bridge and slit their throats, then dump their bodies into the river below. In more modern times, after the house was renovated along with the bridge, a father killed his young family and buried them under the porch before killing himself on the bridge. There's apparently police records from the time and you can see where it appears the porch of the house has been dug up. So it was around 1am when we decided to go. It was a humid and rather hot summer night, and we were driving with the windows down in a black car. As we turned down Lickford Road to go to the bridge, which was pretty far back in the boonies, it began to get colder. By the time we arrived at the bridge, it was cold enough to see your breath. After crossing the bridge, 
we noticed what had to have been thousands of fireflies in the trees, looking like Christmas lights. Even after going to the house, we never felt any sense of dread or fear, just a general spooky vibe from an abandoned building. On the way back towards the bridge, as we were about to cross, we heard a noise off to our left down by the bank. I figured it sounded like a deer hoofing the ground or something along those lines. As we went closer to investigate, it became more clear it was the sound of digging, and the dirt was occasionally being thrown into the water. When I shined my flashlight down the bank, we saw what appeared to be a person in a squatting position, rapidly throwing dirt over their shoulder while digging. Upon closer inspection, the figure was pale white and seemingly emaciated. As my light travelled up its back and came closer to its head, it stopped digging, and its head shot up quickly as it briefly turned around to face us. All I remember seeing were sunken black eyes. We made a break for the car. Now the black car was covered in dust from the dirt road leading to the bridge, and when I shined my light on the car, I saw several handprints with elongated fingers. We drove away and vowed to never come back. Was it the rake? Or maybe something else? Something is stalking outside my house by JP Delta 6 So for a few months now, something weird has been hanging around and outside my house. The first time this became apparent was when one night I was in the basement. Outside the window is a porch and there is a light switch for the lights by the door. I went upstairs for a bit when I realised later, I left the lights on and went downstairs to turn them off. When I came back down, the porch lights were on. Now my father has tried endlessly to hook them up to a timer with no success to his disappointment. I assumed that he had finally figured it out and paid the lights no mind. What I hadn't known was my dad had given up weeks ago and put in an average light switch. Next morning, I go down and see the lights are still on. I assumed the timer didn't turn them off so I go to shut them off, and discover to my shock that it's a switch. This causes me to panic a bit, because that meant someone had been out there, and the rest of my family was asleep last night, and likely they could have been watching me. A few weeks later, I'm sitting downstairs on the couch home alone. It's the dead of night, and my dog, who is very relaxed with frequent events, but has a habit of being too chill sometimes. Suddenly, she perks up and looks to the window. Out of habit, I look with her and see something hunched and white dropping down over our fence and running past the windows. Thanks to the dirty windows and the glare of the lights, I couldn't even hope to make out what I saw or how big it was, but I yelped and panicked and called my buddies. They were sceptical and told me it was probably a raccoon, and I ended up agreeing. I went outside with my dogs, my older chocolate lab and my German puggle, the one who had been with me before. I went out trying to see what it was. Right away my dogs had two very different reactions. The lab was pacing and sniffing and looking around, being very anxious. The other was wagging her tail and looking at the trees the way she does when I have treats. Suddenly, from said trees, I hear a loud groan. These are big strong old trees and they don't groan, not unless something is on them. And a mountain lion who went up them a year ago proved that. Now I tried shining a light up there, but saw nothing. But the trees are thick, and it wasn't until that mountain lion growled last time that I saw him up there in broad daylight. I ended up going inside, because my puggle was moving between the trees with the same look. My lab seemed to be getting increasingly anxious, but now was staying away from the trees and just watching them, my puggle and me, and I wasn't seeing anything. All night I heard weird things. The worst was a loud slam, like a tree branch had fallen, but there was nothing there. And my puggle kept going to the windows and acting unhappy about being kept in. The rest was like the sound of something on the roof, pebbles being thrown at the window, and the return of a woodpecker, who should have been dead after my cats got the poor thing with a vengeance. Now here was the climax that drove me to tell this story. It's been a couple of months now, and I've mostly forgotten about it, Occasionally I'll hear something weird on the front porch, or footsteps, or the porch light will get turned on mysteriously, but they're small things. Tonight I was with my sister and facetiming a friend in the basement again. 
when we hear a screeching sound. Now my first concern was my two or three cat siblings who were taken to taking over the area, which meant they liked to fight the raccoons. Now the sound didn't sound like any raccoon I'd ever heard, but they make odd sounds, especially when two cats are attacking it. So I run to the window in the next room, where I believe I'll be able to see them, then go out to break the fight up from a safe distance, but I instead let out a scream and a flurry of curse words. Outside, standing taller than me for sure, was a gaunt, white, humanoid figure, with its back turned to the window. When I got back to the window and looked back out of it, it was nowhere to be seen. I first thought it was my mind playing tricks on me. There was snow on the ground, and I was dying for a rational explanation, because it scared me so bad, I was shaking. I've told my sister, and she laughed at me. I went upstairs later that night, and got everything ready for the night and locked up. When I went back out front, I froze. I could see my cat who seemed agitated, but calm for the most part on the garage roof, looking at something on my porch. That something was the same white figure, back turned again, except this time it was squatted down and looking at my cat. It didn't seem confrontational itself, but then, for God's sakes, this sent me into tears. It turned its whole body, twisted, and it seemed to kind of straighten as it did. I can only think of a meerkat as an example. But it was so sudden, I was sure I heard bones crack through the window. I never saw the face. As soon as it turned, fight or flight kicked in, and I ran into my bedroom as fast as I could. The last thing I saw of it as I slammed my door was it on the railing, as it leaped towards what I assumed was the nearby tree. Ever since I've been in my room, shaking, crying, and wheezing in a hysterical fit, I like paranormal stuff, but it's a hard no on experiencing it. Now that I've calmed down enough to relate this, I've been thinking about its actions and back to the previous events. I'm trying to explain this to myself. I at first draw a comparison to the creepypasta creature, the rake. That didn't help my panic as you imagine, but the rake was highly hostile. This thing seemed so calm and relaxed most of the time. I don't know what I saw, and it's freaking me out. Chased by Unknown at a Golf Course By Sugar Agro My best friend and I were only 15 and 14 at the time, and just kind of being hoodlums, goofing off and walking around the golf course at his apartment complex. It wasn't unusual for us to walk around the place, just smoking cigarettes and talking about a load of dumb shit. This specific occasion we were walking around, and ended up making our way to the golf course trail around half seven if I had to estimate. It was summertime and we were just enjoying ourselves and being cool, smoking Marlboros and walking the trail as it was starting to get dark, and we were making our way to the other side, kind of close to the exit nearest his apartment. We had stopped by this little pond, still puffing down menthols and bullshitting among ourselves. It was at this point I noticed something strange, a dark silhouette kind of moving along the trees. The harder I looked, I started to see a humanoid type figure walking with a very inhuman stride, seemingly getting faster after I pointed it out to my buddy. Immediately, my bestie pointed out a second identical figure directly behind it. When suddenly, the figures cut left towards us from the tree lines, probably a good three or four hundred feet away, with a pond between us. They were clearly headed straight in our direction. While one was cutting around the pond, the other seemingly just ran through the pond. It was at this point we started panicking, and immediately took off toward the apartments. I was a bit chubby, so my buddy who was much slimmer than I, really gapped me at first. He turned around and saw how far behind I was, and he waited for me, and grabbed my very cool denim vest off my back, I'm guessing to speed me up. The whole time I'm running, I'm looking back every few seconds to notice they're significantly closer each time. I've never run so hard in my life, nor felt so panicked. The most alarming part was that there were no sounds at all. No water splashing, no footsteps, nothing. Fear and adrenaline are all that are fueling me and keeping me from slowing down or catching my breath. Eventually we make it to the exit and charge straight into the gym, which is the first building to the left of the exit, thankfully. We ran straight upstairs and just kind of panicked and caught our breaths, 
and tried to process what the shit just happened. We started to calm down a little, while still being very, very shaken up, and walked out after what felt like half an hour of hyperventilating, but realistically, it was like two or three minutes. We power walked back to the apartment maybe five minutes away, and made it inside safely, and tried to discuss what we had just seen. I doubt myself if I had ever seen this crackhead demon by myself, but we both saw these figures for sure, and their Forrest Gump meets Bigfoot stride. We never really talked about it with anybody else, because most people are clearly very sceptical, so we just discussed it with each other from time to time, and we still have zero ideas as to what we saw chasing us that night. It still kind of haunts me from time to time, and I will never forget it. Hi guys, thank you so much for listening to today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, make sure to leave a like, and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't, making sure to ring that notification bell. I'll be back tomorrow with another new video, so until then, sleep tight.